It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. We appreciate God and appreciate Him watching over us. I hope and pray that God has blessed you already today. I know He has me. And uh, we're going to be in the book of James again uh, today, and we're going to start into chapter 2 by the help of the Lord. And uh, going to be a, a, a preaching this morning on the sin of partiality uh, as we get into that. And uh, uh, ever since God began to touch my heart with this all week long, I've had to search my heart and had to uh, say, Lord, that's me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, that's me. Forgive me. Yeah, Lord, I know. Uh, that's me. Forgive me. Uh, so uh, this is not going to be an easy message today. Uh, but God's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think today. And when we think about uh, the God that Brother Chris was doing a good job trying to uh, explain those things that we need to be a doing. And uh, uh, the main thing, he said, uh, to trust him and that he careth for our soul. Amen. If we put our trust in God, uh, our faults and our failures, God already knows them. And, uh, uh, friend, before the uh, foundation of the world, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, he already knew the life that you was going to live, and he chose to save you anyway in spite of yourself. Why? Because Jesus paid a price, friend, on the cross of Calvary that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Uh, the book of James, uh, then once again, this is uh, the half-brother of Jesus, uh, and uh, and uh, as he got to writing in the Word of God, James became the head of the church there uh, in uh, the early church. And uh, uh, he wrote these things down. The book of James is very blunt. He gets right to the point. He don't beat around the bush. And I thank God for that. That's the way it ought to be. Uh, amen. So let's get into this this morning by the help of God. But before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to uh, remember all of our requests today. God knows your heart this morning before we pray. God, we come to you. God, we ask you, Father, Lord God, to search us, Lord, each one, Lord, here this morning. God, I ask you, Father, Lord, to look, Lord, into the deep in the heart of our mind and our soul, God. Answer those requests, Lord, that's nearest and dearest, Lord, to our hearts, Heavenly Father. And God, we know that you're able, Father. Not only able, but exceedingly able and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God, shall we trust you, Heavenly Father. God, for you hold tomorrow. Lord, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. But tomorrow, Father, if tomorrow comes, Lord, we're going to need that strength. Lord, we're going to need that grace, God, that you so freely give, Heavenly Father. God, walk with us, Lord, and work with us, God. Help us, Lord, to be a help to others as we live our lives down here in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. The book of James, chapter 2, and we'll start reading in verse 1. It says, My brethren, have not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Uh, for, there, for if there cometh unto your assembly a man uh, with a gold ring, and, and in a goodly apparel, and there cometh in also a poor man in vile arraignment. Uh, and you have respect to him uh, that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou, or sit thou here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become a judge of evil thoughts. Hearken, my brother, uh, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which hath promised to them that love him? Be, but ye have despised the poor. Do not the rich oppress you and draw you before the uh, judgment seat? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called. And if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect uh, to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law 
uh, as a transgressor. Amen. Uh, as I begin to look into these verses of Scripture this week, I begin to think about the sin of partiality. And uh, uh, for years, I never really looked at being partial or having partiality as being a sin. Amen. In other words, as preferring one person above another. Now, early in my ministry, uh, years ago, I guess about the second or third message I, I ever preached, uh, I preached a message uh, about looking down your nose at other people. And not too awful long ago, I had a friend of mine, he said, I remember hearing that message, and he said, it stuck with me all of my life. Uh, you know, he said, you know, he said, stuck, he said, stuck with me all my life. And I made a reference to, uh, the, the message, uh, that God allowed me to preach years ago about looking down your nose at people. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and when you point your finger at somebody like that right there, look there, there's three more pointing back at you. Uh, amen. So I think every time that we begin to, uh, judge the book by its cover, uh, we ought to take time to open the, open the cover page and begin to look inside and see what's inside. Amen. Now, most of the people that we deal with out here in, in an everyday, in an everyday setting, uh, most of the people, it doesn't take you but just a few moments of time, uh, by their demeanor of life, by their, by their actions, by their, by their speech, uh, you'll know whether that, uh, uh, their children of God or not. I mean, simple as that. I mean, it's just, uh, even a very good person, someone that doesn't use bad language that, uh, uh, you know, tries to do the right thing and tries to, you know, to help people and, and everything like that right there. If you're around them just a little bit and you begin to talk about the goodness of God, uh, you begin to talk about, uh, uh, the grace that God gives us and different things like that. Uh, you can see their countenance change, especially if they're trying to work their way into the kingdom of God. Friend, you can't work your way into the kingdom of God. And these, these, these scriptures we're fixing to get in here to just a little bit by the help of the Lord. Uh, talks about things uh, that uh, a lot of people, they, they do it, but they do it ignorantly. Why? Because they don't take the time to think that the way that they judge in their mind is a sinful thing. Now, sin is something other that we do every day. The Bible says we deceive ourselves. If we say we have no sin, then we're a liar. And we all sin, the Bible says, and come short of the glory of God. And because we all sin and come short of the glory of God, we have to have uh, times of refreshing and times of repentance before God. Amen. Uh, when, I, if someone calls on me and says, uh, David, uh, want you to pray for such and such because they, uh, you know, they need your help. You know, they're in, they're in the hospital, they're sick or, uh, or, you know, they're, uh, they're something like a third. Then first thing I have to do is I have to look at God and self-examine my own self. Amen. And when I, the, the way that I self-examine my own self and everything is I think about the situation. You say someone that maybe got a drug problem or somebody that's got a problem uh, with doing something other they had or to do or uh, to use a phrase I used to use years ago, if they're a chicken thief. And, uh, uh, you know, every once in a while, uh, we'll meet people. And, uh, uh, you know, and someone will say, I want you to pray for it, pray for my son or my daughter or my brother or my uncle or so forth and so on. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, first, next thing you got to do, you got to say uh, to yourself, before you pray, you have to say, Lord, forgive me of those things that I've thought, those things that I've, uh, uh, foolish words that I've said about people and different things like that right there, because what it is, uh, uh, you're looking, you're, you're judging the book by its cover. Amen. Now, there's a lot of people out there. Now, first of all, I want to tell you right now, personally, I don't believe there's any secret disciples of God. I mean, I, I don't believe there's any people, uh, because if you take something as big as God into your life, amen, it's going to change you. Simple as that. You cannot 
You can't, you, can't, you can't have God living inside of you and not show it out there to a lost and dying world. They'll understand. They'll know. Uh, it shows forth. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Amen. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. And if you take Jesus and you say, Jesus, come into my heart, then you're asking the light to come into you. Amen. And that light begins to shine back out into a lost and dying world. Amen. He said, because in, in the simple gospels over in the book of Matthew chapter five and six over there, uh, it talks about over there, uh, uh, the light and, and, and the candle and the different things like that, uh, that that's out there. And uh, uh, the world sees that. And he said, and they'll persecute you for my name's sake. It don't take long. You're getting a, you're getting a bunch of people that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, they're carrying on with a lot of their foolishness and different things like that. And you're hearing uh, the Lord's name in vain and different things like that there. And, and just to tell you the truth, when I begin to get around people that uses the Lord's name in vain, uh, I start trying to find me a way to exit. I just, I mean, I don't want to hear it. Uh, it's, it's an, uh, to me, it's an abomination, uh, to call the heavenly father, uh, you know, and to use the Lord's name in vain. It's just, to me, that's just, it's just, uh, it's not a good thing. And it's easy to judge people that does that. Amen. It is. It's easy to say, you know, uh, you'll look at him and say, well, you know, they've got, oh, that's a nice truck he's driving. I, you know, he's give a whole lot of money for it and all this bunch of stuff right here. And boy, they got, you know, they've got every, a little bit of everything and all like that there. And then, then the first thing you know, you'll look around and say, boy, I wish I had a new truck or I wish I had a new truck and a boat. And, and boy, I wish I had a place over the lake. And, and first one thing, and you know what you're doing? You're coveting. You're coveting. The Bible says, thou shalt not covet. Amen. Coveting, coveting things that other people have got uh, is a sin. So, you know, and that's what we have to really look at to see what it is. And when I read verse 9, it says, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. And are convinced or convicted, however you want to say that, of the law. The law is uh, brings man to the, uh, to the knowledge of, uh, of being a transgressor. That's what the law does. Before the law was given, friend, there was no transgression. We didn't know uh, that the things that we did was against the law of God. Amen. But when God gave the law, uh, and when we read those things, the Ten Commandments, which is very much enforced today, and the laws that are given over in the book of Leviticus, starting about chapter 11, uh, all the way down, uh, those laws that were given over there are laws today to govern our lives, to help us to live a wholesome, clean life uh, before the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, God's not happy uh, with uh, people that have respect to people, but we do it. And sin, when we do do it, then we sin before God. And we're to have, uh, and when we sin before God, there ain't but one way to take care of that. The Bible says in the book of John, uh, over there, he said, if we, if we sin, uh, then uh, we're to confess our sin before God, which is faithful and just, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then once you get confessed up, then someone that asked you that prayer, then you can turn around and start praying for them. Uh, along the way. Amen. That's the way God hears your prayers. All right, let's move on. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, I want to read a few verses of Scripture to you. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, uh, as I was looking at these Scriptures, I was thinking, my, 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 uh, uh, what, a, what wonderful words of God. Listen to what it says in Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. Uh, yeah, here they are. And this is Peter. And he's on the, uh, uh, has been on the, uh, having a, a, a vision. God told him he fell asleep and, you know, he let down the, the sheet and was with all kinds of uh, four-footed beasts and different things in it. And, and Peter, he kind of contended with God a little bit. And God told him, he said, Peter, he said, uh, call all that that I have uh, cleansed, common and unclean. But then when you get into verses 34 and 35, this is what Peter learned. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, 
I perceive that God is no respecter of person. But in every nation, uh, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Amen. Now, Peter was one of the disciples that walked with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as Peter walked with the Lord Jesus Christ, he saw the example of living a perfect life down here in this world. You and I will never live the life that Jesus Christ lived. Amen. He walked down here perfect before God. Uh, he, he eschewed to every one of the laws that was given and everything. And uh, uh, yes, Jesus planted him a, a, a cat of nine tails or a whip. And he walked into the, uh, to the, the temple of God. And he thrashed the money changers and threw over the tables. And he looked at them and he said, and he said you have turned the God's house into a den of thieves. Uh, amen. Now, but now Jesus has that right. Amen. To, to pass that kind of judgment. You and I really don't have that kind of right. Amen. Uh, the word of God judges people. You and I can inspect the fruit that, word, uh, that the word of God uh, brings out. Amen. Uh, the word of God will bring out wholesome fruit and, it, uh, uh, and, and fruit that's, uh, that's mixed with the love of God and with the Holy Spirit of God. God works in love. Amen. God is love. And without God, there is no love. Simple as that. Now, there's infatuation, uh, but there's not love. Amen. Until the love of God is shed abroad in your heart and soul. Amen. Then you know how to love. The Bible says in another place, you know that you've passed from death unto life because you love the brethren. Amen. In other words, you're able to have uh, compassion uh, down in your heart. You're able to, uh, uh, to have the peaceful fruit uh, of righteousness down in your soul. Amen. Uh, and you're able to love people regardless of their situation, regardless of the cover that they wear on their book. Amen. Now, these times, now I love camouflage, you know, and, and it's just most of the time, if you see me, I've got camouflage on. Uh, amen. I've even wore camouflage here before you, uh, friend, out here in this world. Uh, but to a lot of people, camouflage is that they think, well, a lot of Christians shouldn't be wearing camouflage on everything. There's nothing wrong with camouflage. There's nothing wrong uh, with the clothes that you wear. The Bible says to let, your, let uh, the clothes to be modest apparel and that your nakedness do not show. Amen. That's what God looks at. Amen. He doesn't look. Uh, at these things. Notice what he said over in the book of James. He said uh, there was a, a man, a rich man come in uh, uh, and everything. He had a ring of gold on his, uh, uh, on his hand, probably wearing a gold chain around his neck. But his clothes were, uh, uh, were real nice clothes. In other words, he'd even used the word gay clothing. He made, in other words, he, he stuck out. He stood out in the crowd. Then there's a poor man come in that all he had was probably the clothes that was on his back, the clothes that he worked in every day, the clothes that he got up every morning and put on and went out. Now, you got to remember the day and time that James lived down here, uh, most of the poor people had one change of clothes and they wore them till they wore out or the, till they could earn enough money uh, to buy uh, another uh, change of clothes. And... Uh, I can give you an example of that over in the Old Testament. There was a fellow named Achan, uh, and he was uh, uh, one of the soldiers. And uh, uh, they uh, was told not to, to go when they won the battle. And, and, and Achan decided that he wanted to get him a, a wedge of gold and a couple of wedges of silver and, and some Babylonian garments. In other words, to get some of their, their nice clothing that they had there. And everything, probably to, so that he would have an extra change of clothes or had something other than nice to put on or whatever. But God had forbid them to take any of that uh, and everything. Then the next time they went out to fight, uh, the, the children of Israel began to lose their, uh, they began to lose the battle. Why? Because there was sin in the camp. And because there was sin in the camp, uh, uh, the man of God, you know, they, they come to Achan over there and he said, Achan, give an account of yourself. And because of God and because of the Holy Spirit of God and everything, he said, uh, well, I took some stuff. And he said, and it's buried in my tent. Well, the penalty for, the, for him sinning over there, they took his tent, his family, uh, uh, his whole family, 
and they were all killed. And they took everything the man had and, and destroyed it. It was thrown on a dung heap and probably set on fire. I don't know. But all I do know is because uh, that, that, that he, you know, the poor people in those times, and they didn't go out and steal. They earned their clothes. A lot of times, uh, if you go back over into the book of Ruth, and, uh, uh, and, and you study that out and look at the history of the people in that day and time, those women uh, that was gleaning in the field, they took off some of their good clothes and everything, and, and part of their nakedness was showing uh, in that day and time. Uh, and, but they were gleaning in the fields. Over there. They were poor people. Peter was a fisherman. And when Jesus met Peter uh, there at the ship, you know, and this is after his resurrection, uh, and Peter said, you know, because they hadn't seen Jesus in a little while, he said, I'm going to go fishing. And much of the other disciples went with him. And they'd been out toiling all night long. And then Jesus was there at the, sh at the seashore uh, and everything. And because they were poor people and they, did, they didn't want to destroy their clothes and didn't want to destroy those things uh, that they had, Amen. Peter had laid his cloak, his cloak off and his clothes off. And they were working out there totally during the night fishing. Uh, uh, and they were naked. Amen. And Peter jerked, grabbed his cloak and jumped in because he was naked. Uh, and swam to the shore and met Jesus on the seashore. Amen. That was a common place. People didn't have what we have today. If God tarries his coming and I live to be a hundred years old. There's no way possible that I can wear out all the clothes that I have in there in my closets right now. I, if I never bought anything else, I just can't live long enough to wear them out in case, unless if I gained weight and couldn't wear them. You know what I mean? Uh, I just, I'd never be able to do that. We are a blessed people today. Amen. But in the time that James lived, those poor people, people looked down at them. And that's what he's saying here, uh, this sin. You and I, when we look down upon uh, the poor people of this world, and I'm guilty, amen, I'm guilty because we've had a lot of people coming into our country in the last little while. And I asked an individual the other day, I said, do you see any of them people coming into our country that has got vile raiment on uh, their clothes, I said, they've got good clothes. They've got name brand tennis shoes coming in. They're carrying cell phones. Uh, they've got, uh, they are, they're not hungry. I've not seen one little child with its belly swelled out because it's uh, come from a place where there's a phantom in the land. I've not saw anybody uh, that was poor uh, and, 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 and spindly looking because of phantom in their land. Amen. Hadn't seen none of that. And everything, and uh, yeah, and I kind of made a statement that I've had to repent of, ever, but since then, Amen. And all, I can't have respect to person to those people coming in here. Uh, I watched a little documentary not long ago on these people that's coming through the jungles, and they was questions put forth to these people, and they're saying, uh, and the the question they was put forth is, why are you going to the United States? Because they, it's been told them that they will have a better life. They'll be supplied a home. They'll be supplied food. And they'll, be, and they'll have uh, jobs waiting on them when they get here. Now, think about this. When Moses come on the backside, out from the backside of the desert and he walked back into the camp there in Egypt uh, to, the, uh, to the Egyptian people and he looked at Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. And all of these things. Uh, he had a uh, message to preach to his people, the children of Israel. He said, God has provided us a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. And you get to go. You're going to get to go. And then people prepared for a journey. Well, these people all over the world right now that is preparing for a journey to come into, a, into, the, into the promised land. That's what they've told these people, that they would have all of these things prepared for them. And then we look around and we say, how, why in the world 
you know, how, how are we going to do this? How are we going to, uh, uh, to give everybody in the world a, a, a place to live and food to eat and, and, and jobs and all of these things? How are we going to do that? Amen. And it's very easy to have respect a person. Very easy. Especially when you go to the grocery store and you see what takes place down at the grocery store. Most of the poor people, you can tell people that don't have a whole lot of money. When they go up to check out, they have just a few items in their grocery cart. And you can tell people that getting it free. When they go out, the carts are rounded up. You say, preacher, that's not good preaching. Yes, it is good preaching. But now we have to watch what we say. Amen. Why? Because we're the light of the world. Amen. Uh, we're not to have, uh, uh, we're not to, not to be uh, partial and not to have partiality. Amen. Yes, friend, God has put us in a wonderful place. And God has given us those things that we stand in need of. He's done just what he said, like Matthew 6, 33. If you'll seek the kingdom of God first, he said, all of these things will be added unto you. In other words, he's taking care of us. Amen. And then Peter had to learn the lesson the hard way. He said, I perceive, in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 35, he said, I perceive uh, uh, that God is no respecter of a person. Then, then we look at John 3.16. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now let's look over in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, just for a moment. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, uh, verse 31. Listen to what it says. Amen. Verse 31. Maybe I'm in the wrong one here. Let's see. Chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 31. I, I know they get it right in a minute. Amen. Listen to what it says. For as the body hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, also is Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew uh, or Gentiles, or whether we be bond or free. Uh, uh, and having been all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one, but many members, uh, but many. Uh, if the foot shall say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not an eye, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? The whole, uh, and if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? And if the whole body were the hearing, where would the smelling? But now God has set every member, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if, and if, they, were, and if they were all one member, where would the body be? And when I read over that there, there's a... Uh, uh, saying, this is not biblical, but if all of my church friends were just like me, what in the world would this church be? Think about that. There's a diversity of people around us. And we have to learn that God loves us all and that God put us in the body where it's pleased him. Now, I don't know what my position is in the body. I know that God called me to preach uh, in September of 1995, uh, when God called me to preach, amen, and, and he chose to make a servant out of me. But as far as being uh, one of the great preachers, I'm not, amen. I'm just a simple man that's called of God, that has to repent daily, and I have to study to show myself uh, approved unto God. Uh, because I don't want to be ashamed of those things that God has given me, amen. And when I was talking to them just a few moments ago uh, about uh, the way that people dressed in the day and time and the way that they dress in this day and time, there's not a whole lot of difference in it. 
The thing about it is, a lot of people that walk around almost naked today, uh, they don't know God. That's just simple as that. Because when you get God in your heart and soul, you'll begin to cover up some of your nakedness. Amen. Let's just, and I'll leave that alone. I'll stop it right there. Uh, amen. Now, let's move on just for a second. He said, but now if God said to every member, uh, every one of them in the body as it has pleased him. And so... Uh, the body is made up of many members. And if God wants me just to be a prayer warrior, I'll be a prayer warrior. Uh, if God wants me to be a deacon of the church, I'll be a deacon of the church. If God wants me to be a teacher, the bell ringer, somebody has to sweep the floor. Uh, somebody has to pray. Amen. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, some of the greatest work that's done in the church of the living God is those that are able to sit down and pray without partiality uh, in their heart and soul to God. Uh, to pray for the work of the church uh, and for members to be saved by God's marvelous grace. Prayer warriors, is, we, we can all be a prayer warrior uh, as we live our lives down here. So, all right, let's move on uh, a little bit. James chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, let's go back over here and read it. Uh, and we'll try to hush just in a minute. He says, but if you have respect of persons, you commit sin. Now, I know I've dealt with that already quite a bit. Uh, but the word of God says in the last days that the love of many would wax cold. All right. Now, if you have partiality to people, uh, in other words, uh, what you're saying is, is I don't love that person. I don't care about that person. I don't care how they live. They can live any way they want to. And everything. If you see somebody that's caught up in some of the things of this world, the Bible says uh, uh, in one place, he said, ye that are spiritual... He said, restore such and one. In other words, but you do it in a place, uh, not in a, a, a whole bunch of people. You don't walk up to somebody and say, hey, buddy, I see you've been, uh, you've been doing some stuff that ain't right. Uh, I believe you need to get down and do a little praying. The Bible says you better uh, look to see if there's a, a, a stick in your eye, too, before you do that. They'll rend you before them. Amen. That's called casting your pearls before the swine. Amen. That's what it is. Now, the swine, we can all be a little hoggish. Every one of us can. We can all be a little bit like a swine. Amen. Uh, a swine, uh, they just root around and they're constantly looking for something other to eat. They never look up to see where it comes from. You and I, we, we, we take the grace of God and we, and we waste it foolishly living any way we want to live. Amen. We just take it in. We eat and we eat and we eat and we eat. And we never say, God, we never say, God, uh, uh, how did I get this? Or why did I get this? Or, or anything else like that. But, you know, but if you go out there and you're trying to bring correction into somebody's life, call them off to the side where it's one-on-one. -on -one, just you and them and God. Amen. And then you better check yourself out. And make sure they ain't no faults in your life, because be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. If you look at a man and tell him uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's got a problem with shoplifting, and you better be careful, because before the day dawns sometimes, or maybe a, just in a short period of time, you'll walk out of a store with something other that don't belong to you, uh, uh, whether it be an accident or on purpose. You man, if you ever went and bought something other or whatever like that there, when you get there and you look at it and say, boy, they, they forgot to bring that up. Now, now when they forget to ring it up, what do you do? You're supposed to take it back. And you walk in there and say, look, you didn't ring this up. I need to pay for this. I don't feel right about it uh, and everything. That's the Christian thing to do. But now then, that person that is, is trying his best and everything and says, well, they'll never miss that and everything. They're, uh, they, you know, they're, they're tearing stores all to pieces all over the country right now. Big gangs walking in and carrying out everything. Well, they'll never miss that and everything. But you're just as guilty if you don't go back and do the right thing as the person that you was talking to about stealing. You're just as guilty. And it will come home to you. It will come home to you. Amen. See, friend, God is not mocked. Amen. And if you have respect to people and everything, now, I think that there's a time Paul penned 
over in the Word of God, and I can't tell you exactly where it's at. Uh, but he said over there, he said, I became all things to all men that I might win the son. In other words, that he might gain some of them as children of God. To the Jew, he became a Jew. To the Roman, he became a Roman. Uh, to the Gentile, he became a Gentile. Now, Paul could do either one. Uh, Paul's, either his mother or, or his daddy, one or the other, was a Roman. Uh, uh, his, I think his father was a Jew, uh, and, and uh, he was the offspring, uh, so that made him uh, uh, a Gentile, neither Jew nor Roman, uh, and everything. But he could, well, he, he could fit any position he needed to fit, and God called him that way, and God prepared his life before the foundation of the world. Now, that's not saying, friend, uh, that you go out here and, and, and do things wrong so that you can have an opportunity to, to tell them about the things that are right. That's not, that's not what he's talking about. Amen. Uh, what he's talking about here, in other words, if you have respect of a person and everything, think about the type of person he is first. Then relate yourself to that person in such a way that you can talk to him without bringing a reproach on him if you understand what I'm talking about in other words if you see somebody that's down and out and uh, and in vile raiment and everything there and, and say you pick up a hitchhiker coming up a road most people don't do that anymore but if you pick up a hitchhiker and you talk to him just a little bit and I used to do it all the time when I was working there was always someone walking on the road and I'd pick them up and just in a little while I'd ask them a few questions find out where they're going and and everything else like that there. And before that I let them out of the car. I had talked to them most of the time. And there's one man that I picked up. That he was so belligerent. That I couldn't even speak to him. You could just. You could feel. Something. Different about him. And I couldn't talk to him about that. And, and I just gave him a ride. And, and let him off and and everything, and, and bid him goodbye. That's the only thing I could do. But most of the people that I would talk to them a little bit and find out what kind of work they did or whatever like that right there, and I would use those that conversation to open a conversation concerning my Lord and my Savior. Amen. To try to win them to the Lord. Trying to leave just a little seed in their heart that might come up a little bit later on. Amen. You never know. The Bible says that we entertain angels on a wire. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. It's been good to be here today. We appreciate you. Amen.